Hey, welcome back to the Too Fast channel. In today's video, I'm going to discuss how to remove the front grille emblem on a pre-facelift Volkswagen EOS. This may not apply to the facelift versions. So if you have a pre-facelift, this should be applicable to your EOS. Uh, I can't comment if this is applicable to the Golf or any of the other cars because I haven't tried to remove the grill emblem. So what we're looking at right now, um, this uh, Volkswagen EOS VR6, um, this entire grill frame assembly has been replaced. Uh, it originally came with one that had chrome strips on it. Uh, this is the standard uh, grill frame uh, that does not have the chrome strips on it. I did transfer over my emblem from the other grill to this new one and of course I painted the frame or I had the frame painted body color and so it's not chrome anymore. Uh, the, this is the actual chrome part of the emblem. This is the uh, backing piece that snaps into the grill. You've got to remove the entire uh, emblem to remove this chrome piece. There are little clips on the back that you need to push on uh, to kind of pop it off of this. It's I wouldn't recommend trying to remove the chrome piece from this piece with it in place. You want to remove the entire assembly. So when I originally uh, replaced the grill, um, you know, I took I took the old one off. It was kind of easy to figure out how to remove this emblem with the entire grill off. And that ideally is the best way to do it. Uh, but once you know how it goes on and comes off, you can actually remove this emblem with the grill still on the car. So that's that's what we're going to talk about. And um, why do I have this chrome piece removed? Well, I'm going to actually paint this black uh, to match the this grill. Um, I'm not really a big fan of chrome. Um, so I don't mind a little bit, but ideally I don't even want a Volkswagen emblem on the front of the car. Um, in the past, you could get a uh, emblem delete grill. It was aftermarket. Uh, they don't make those anymore. They're difficult to find. And on top of that, they have an integrated Euro license plate mount right here. So even if I found one, I'd be stuck with a Euro plate mount that's molded into the piece. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, paint it black. Um, I'm in the process of trying to determine what shade of black matches this grill. So I've been dealing with ultra flat, flat, matte black, satin black, semi-flat black. So I've been, I've got a whole bunch of different cans of fusion and different blacks and uh, I'm still experimenting, but maybe later on in the video, I'll come back and I'll, I'll give you my feedback on what color closely matches this if you decide you want to paint your emblem. Uh, anyway, so the easiest way to remove this emblem is with your hood open, you can see where my hand is right, right here. Now, right down here, right on top is this clip and you can feel it if you put your finger in right here. What you need to do is you need to push down on this clip and kind of push in on the emblem and turn it until it reaches this point right here. Now, it still doesn't really want to come out once you get it to this position. So I'm going to put my finger back in there. I'm going to push down on the little clip, which is right there. And I'm going to pull this part forward until it comes out. And then you can remove the emblem. So you can see it's got these little push clips on it. And the one that actually locks into place, at least on my car, is is right up here and you can see the little notch right there so when you push down here twist the emblem here and boom you can tilt it out so it's actually pretty easy to remove you just have to know how to do it and and uh, um, i learned that by you know like i said replacing the entire grill so that's the uh, removal the installation would be uh, very similar what we're going to do is we're going to put this side in first you can see there's a little clip right there so i want to get that clip in there and then tilt it downwards and push down on that until it snaps in and 
it doesn't want to rotate so I'm gonna put my finger back in there and I'm gonna push down on that clip and we're gonna rotate it until it's center and it's locked and there you go so it's pretty simple if you know how to do it and um, so now you know anyway um, that's going to end this part of the video um, I'll probably come back after I've done some experimentation with some different colors of black and I'll give you my feedback on what I found color wise which is going to match this grill all right uh, continuing on with the front Volkswagen emblem painting project uh, these are the paints that uh, I've collected um, different shades of black um, starting from the left the ultra flat Krylon camouflage uh, I've got a low gloss black um, engine enamel made by Duplicolor that's normally used for painting things that need to withstand high temperatures brake calipers uh, exhaust manifolds and so on um, but it, it's it's a really good paint it, it goes on and lays lays very well and it dries quickly so I've got that in the mix here um, we've also got a regular Krylon semi flat and then we've got uh, two uh, Krylon Fusion all-in-ones that are primer and paint. We have satin black and matte black. Now this isn't every possible shade of black on the market. These are just the ones that I could find making a few trips to Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, and uh, I, I've, what I've done is I've, I've done little sample prints or sample sprays on these little pieces of plastic of these different colors um i did shoot the matte black um uh but i ended up reusing the matte black because the matte black just uh that color wasn't a good match so i don't have a sample of that at the moment but um what i'm going to do is I'll, I'll take these these four that i do have and i'll put them up on the grill and um, show you kind of what uh, what they look like um, what it comes down to basically is the what appears to be the best match is this duplicolor this engine enamel um, this low gloss black uh, in my eyes it seems to be the best match at least on these little sample pieces um, once you spray it on a larger surface, uh, yeah, maybe maybe it won't be such a great match. But anyway, um, let me go ahead and put these on the uh, grill, and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so starting from the left is the Krylon camouflage ultra flat, then the low gloss black engine enamel, the duplicolor the Krylon semi-flat, and then the Krylon Fusion satin black. So the camouflage ultra-flat is too flat, and the closest match uh, is the Duplicolor engine enamel. Uh, it may not show up on the camera, but from me looking at it in different lighting, um, it looks to be the best match. The second best would be the semi-flat, but I think the semi-flat's got too much gloss in it. And of course, the satin black has got too much gloss. Even the matte black, which I don't have a sample here, um, when I did paint it and test it, it had too much gloss. It was better than the satin black, but it still had too much gloss. So this is the one that I'm gonna go with, which is the um, low gloss Duplicolor engine enamel. And We'll go ahead and paint the emblem, um, get it prepped, and uh, we'll come back and take a look at it and see how well it matches. All right, so I went ahead and skipped ahead a bit, and I'm not going to show the process of cleaning and sanding and painting the emblem, but I will talk about it, and I will talk about what I used. So... Uh, previous to what I said, um, I elected to go with the low gloss black, the DE1634, the Duplicolor engine enamel paint. Um, 
and I did not use a primer, but I did use the Duplicolor Automotive Prep Spray, uh, which is basically a wax and degreaser. So my process is pretty simple when it comes to painting any parts. I thoroughly clean the part. Um, that could be washing it with uh, dish soap, uh, drying it, and then I prep it with a wax and grease remover. I do all of this before I start sanding. And then the sanding process, depending upon what you're painting, I normally go with either a 320 or a 400 grit wet dry sandpaper like this. This is a 400 grit wet dry uh, sandpaper. Your sandpaper will, will last a lot longer if you wet sand your, your item and, and keep uh, the sandpaper wet. So that's what I always do is, is if, if I can, I'll wet sand it. And you don't need a lot of sandpaper to, to, to prep your emblem, especially if it's new. Mine was old, had a lot of rock chips on it, uh, so it required a bit more sanding to get a smooth surface. So I went through uh, probably four or five of these little pieces, which I cut down from a larger piece. Once everything is sanded and smooth and I'm feeling that the surface is good for paint, um, I'll then um, use some rubber gloves, which I didn't have in the picture, but uh, I, I'll, I'll put on rubber gloves first, and then uh, I'll use the wax and grease remover. Uh, the one thing you don't want to do is before you paint a surface, you don't want to touch it with your fingers. Your fingers have oil on them um, and who knows what else uh, that can contaminate the surface. So put the gloves on first, use the wax and grease remover, clean everything up, dry it off with a lint-free cloth or a tack cloth, preferably, and then you're basically ready to paint. So painting, um, I'm not a painting expert, but um, you don't want to be painting when it's 20 degrees outside. You want it to be 60 degrees or better. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do if I'm using a rattle can like this is I'll put the rattle can uh, in front of a, my small space heater. Now you gotta be careful doing that because you don't want to blow up a, 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 a paint can, but you know, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it and put it in front of the space heater and get it warmed up. Uh, paint flows better. Everything works better. If the paint is warm, if the surface you're painting is warm, if the outside temperature is warm, I don't paint in the rain and I don't paint when it's cold outside, but you know, your results may vary, but the, that's what I found to work best. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a, uh, you know, I can't really paint indoors in my garage. I could if I moved my car out, but, um, and I have done that in the past. Uh, I, I have moved my car out and set up a little, lay down a drop cloth and set up a little paint area in the center of my garage. Uh, you can do that if you have the proper respirator. Um, having a good, uh, if you're going to paint indoors, you want a good respirator that's going to that's designed to filter the uh, fumes and the 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 um, paint particles. Uh, if you don't have that, then you're going to want to paint outside. And I still recommend using some sort of a mask. Um, when I'm painting outside, there's you know there's good airflow, but I still you know this is a the, a 3M uh mass this isn't necessarily designed for painting but uh it works works good uh if if i'm outside so those are some precautions um uh and once you once you're good to go and your surface area is is prepped um you can start start painting um i always i always paint um i always paint uh in light coats and with the spray can, I'll spray, I'll start spraying over here. See, say I'm painting the emblem. I'll start painting over here. I spray across and I stop. I start printing, spraying over here where my finger is. And I go all the way across and I stop. You don't want to stop right in the middle of, of your emblems. You want even coats going all the way across. And then you want to make sure you get the, 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 the ring here. So you may have to go around and then, you know, I may start first going this way, 
my second coat, I'll start on this side and I'll go back and forth. That way you get even coverage. You don't get any areas that have uh, too much paint. Too much paint equals drips or sags. Um, you want nice, even, light coats. Uh, so you want to do a light coat, wait 10 minutes or so, especially if it's warm out, 10 minutes is good. Uh, do another coat, do another coat. So, you know, anywhere from, I like to do four to six coats of light coats until I get a nice, even finish. So anyway, that's the process I use, and I've rattle canned a whole lot of different things. So um, I can tell you right now, the, this Duplicolor Engine Enamel, this is great paint. It, it, it dries quickly. It goes on. It's, I've had no trouble with it. Whereas the Krylon Fusion, which is designed for plastic, you got to, that paint is, is tricky to work with. Um, it doesn't want to lay correctly. Uh, it drips easy. Uh, it's, it's, you've got to, you've got to really be careful using that. It's not as forgiving as say the Duplicolor engine enamel. So that's just, what I found over over the years of, of using different types of paint. So anyway, um, enough of the yapping. So this is the uh, this is the emblem and, and how it turned out. I'm I'm happy with the finish. Um, you know, like I said, the Duplicolor uh, laid out uh, really good. I got good even coverage. Uh, there was no splotches. There was no fish eyes. Uh, nothing like that. So real happy with that. All right, so. Uh, our next step in this process is the emblem frame here. We've got to uh, go ahead and put this back on. Uh, incidentally, um, I don't touch any painted surfaces after they've been painted. I do not touch them for 24 hours. Um, so although the paint may say uh, you can handle within an hour or two hours or what have you, I don't, I don't touch any item that's been painted for 24 hours. Um, so we're going to put this back on our, our little frame. Um, we should be able to, to set this on and just kind of snap it into place like so. And we are done. Nice. And there it is. So with this done, let me reposition the tripod and uh, we'll get this installed back on the EOS. Okay, now let's get this installed. Um, as in the previous section, we're going to insert this tab down here. I'm going to insert that first. Press down on this tab. Turn the emblem. Of course, it's not going to completely go in. Get my finger in there, press down, twist it, and lock it into place. And there we go. So I am happy with how this turned out. Um, looking at the emblem against the grill, it's not a hundred percent. This um, duplicolor low gloss black is not quite as glossy i guess as the grill but out of all the paints i tried it's the best match most of the gloss blacks are way too glossy uh, and my experimentation using those gloss paints uh at, it really stood out too much with the uh the, the emblem being super glossy black so i definitely did not want that the flats were too flat um so you know without going to uh some sort of a, a custom paint store and bringing them the grill and saying match me some paint that you know mix me up some paint that matches this and paying them several hundred dollars and then trying to figure out where to get a compressor and a paint gun and all this stuff i don't have I kind of had to choose a rattle can solution that uh, was a close match. So most people are not going to look at this and they're not going to say, oh, well, that's not 100% of a match. Well, true. Uh, I, I, I look at those things. Sometimes they, they, they bug me. Um, but in this situation, um, you know, 
it doesn't. It, it looks good. And I like this look much better than the chrome that was on there. I'm just not really a big fan of chrome, period, uh, nowadays. So, um, yeah, we're, we're done. So uh, that's the process for removal of the Volkswagen EOS pre-facelift front grille emblem. How to take it apart, how to prep it, how to paint it, what paint to use, and how to reinstall it. So that's going to wrap up another Volkswagen EOS video. Uh, thanks for watching. S stick around till the end. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch you in the next video.